Hello there, and welcome back to the booth here at Pro Tour Dominaria. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe with Luis Scott Vargas, and we're going to be taking you all the way through the finals. We've got two semifinals to bring you before we get to that point. As you just saw, our first one features two players from Portugal. This is going to be Marcio Carvalho versus Gonzalo Pinto. They are seated and ready in the feature match. Let's head on down. It's time for our first semifinal match. Hello and welcome back to coverage here at Pro Tour Dominaria. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with the Hall of Famer Luis Scott Vargas, and we're ready for semifinal number one, where we have two players who traveled here together, tested together, in fact, grew up together. Marcio Carvalho from Portugal playing red black aggro for Team Havaria Latin. Take a look at him. His opponent on the other side of the table, one of his best friends in the world. They've known each other for over 15 years. That is Gonzalo Pinto. He's also on Red Black Aggro, and Luis, it looks like they're on a 75-card mirror here, having tested uh, on the same team. Yeah, they're uh, both playing Black-Red. You know, whether you want to call it mid-range or aggro is kind of up for debate, but given that uh, they have Beaumont Courier, you tend to call it uh, aggro. And the key cards in this matchup are Heart of Kieran, Goblin Chain Whirler, you know, Chandra, Torch of Defiance. Basically, the expensive cards are the cards that matter the most. We see a Braid killing a heart of Kieran here and clearing the way for two damage for Marcio in the process. He's got Soulscar Mage at the ready. Where does Soulscar Mage fit into the hierarchy here? You just mentioned some of the more expensive cards. This is a, a one drop that doesn't die to Chain Whirler, but is it even good here? It's at its best in combination with Chain Whirler because uh, the ability on Soulscar Mage means that the Chain Whirler damage gets replaced by minus one, minus one counters. It can peck in for a couple points of damage here and there, but in general, it's not, not really what you want to draw too much. If you want to draw exactly one Soul Scar Mage or sometimes zero. Okay. In the meantime, Karizev Skyship Raider on the other side of the battlefield here. And we're going to see a second copy of a Braid. That's going to be used to take down Karizev, and the uh, Soul Scar Mage is going to once again hit in for two damage, knocking Gonzalo down to 16. Gonzalo's now going to attack with his Soul Scar Mage and draw first blood here. Marcio drops down to 19, but what's the follow up? This is important. Oh, how about a Goblin Chain Wheeler? Yeah, it's going to be nice. And, li and uh, like I mentioned earlier, that, that's a minus one, minus one counter on the Soul Scar Mage. And one of the features of this red matchup, which we've you know, already seen in the top eight a few times, we'll continue to see, is that the, the incidental damage doesn't matter all that much. I mean, it does matter what your opponent's life total is, but. These decks don't have a ton of face burn anymore. Lightning Strike and Shock are really the uh, main ones with some, some copies of Unlicensed Disintegration floating around. And it's really more about control of the board than it is, is much of a race. Rekindling Phoenix is the play for Carvalho, though his Soul Scar Mage finally sitting back home. Pinto's going to chip in for three damage here with the Chain Whirler. And he's got another copy of Soul Scar Mage leaving up three mana before passing the turn back to Marcio, who gets to untap with that rekindling Phoenix and is going to start jamming, though it looks like an Abrade is going to at least halt the proceedings for a turn cycle here. Yeah, and I believe that uh, Gonzalo has another Chain Whirler in hand, so now he gets to finish off the Elemental, the Phoenix Egg, f with that Chain Whirler. Another Kirizev hits the battlefield, this time on Marcio Carvalho's side of the board. Does he have anything else to add here? He looks like he's got a Heart of Kieran, but has chosen to keep it in his hand in favor of a, a Shock. Yeah, and he, he also may uh, cycle uh, Canyon Slew this turn as well. And there it is. Chain Whirler. Number two, that's also going to finish off the Soul Scar Mage of Marcio Carvalho and put a counter on Karizev. So things are starting to really snowball in Pinto's favor. Yeah, drawing the second Chain Whirler was a, a pretty big advantage. And here you, you're going to see Marcio cycle before deciding what to do with blocking because he just gets the most information. He, he'll know what he's doing next turn. He also has a really big incentive to cycle instead of using Shock because Shock can only take down a Soul Scar Mage and he really wants to have an efficient turn next turn, maybe by playing both. So he does get to soak up one damage from the Soul Scar Mage with his 0 2 carry Zev. But he's still taking significant amount here. Another four. 
players are going to be speaking in Portuguese to each other. Chain Whirler off the top. It is very much Goblin Chain Whirler's world. All of the decks that we have into the semifinals feature four copies. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of uh, chain whirling back and forth, and the soul scar mages are, are being important here. Get, you know, getting that lasting damage, scarring them with uh, the chain whirler damage, really does add up to an advantage. Now, this chain whirler will not be putting minus one minus one counters, but he does have a shock to combine with the one damage from the chain whirler to kill. You guessed it, the opposing chain whirler. And this this still leaves Gonzalo. You know, fairly far ahead if he can untap and then remove this chain whirler. If he doesn't have a spell though, he doesn't have great attacks. So th this turn is gonna is gonna hinge on that. Yeah, he doesn't have it. His hand is uh, a mountain and a scrap heap scrounger now. So this will actually halt the proceedings and chain whirler doing a good job. It looks like uh, Gonzalo's gonna offer a trade here. I'll trade you my chain whirler for yours, potentially unlocking attacks with soul scar mages in future turns. And, and Marcio has to know that uh, Gonzalo doesn't have a removal spell, otherwise he would have just killed the chain roller and jammed for seven. Mm -hmm. So Marcio's deciding whether he wants to trade or take a hit down to seven. And if he takes the hit, which it looks like he did, he's going to be able to then follow up maybe with removal of his own to pull, pull ahead. Yeah, and he did, in fact, take that hit, but he has some pretty reasonable defense here now with chain whirler plus whatever he plays this turn. It's going to be Karyzev hitting the red zone, though, for Marcio. And it looks like Gonzalo just says, well, I'll just double block, I guess. And you can see why he did that. He had drawn another copy of Kari yeah, the, the second copy of the legendary Kari does make, make it, so Marcio's fine trading off here. Yeah, he just got in for two damage with Raghavan. And now he has an improved Kari No minus one, minus one counter on that one. Boy, there's another Goblin Chain Whirler. They are all over the battlefield here. I'm not surprised to see it, but goodness sakes, they've drawn most of them. And this is really tough for Marcio because if he lets the ability resolve, Chain Whirler plus Karyzev can no longer crew Heart of Kieran because of the minus one, minus one counters. Oh my goodness. However, if you crew in response, then the Heart of Kieran gets the minus one, minus one counter. Either way, the door's gonna be open for Gonzalo to attack with his previous Chain Whirler and maybe his Scrap Heap Scrounger or Soul Scar Mages. Yeah, it looks like Marcio has decided not to crew the Heart of Kirin. Just let that ability resolve. Those are minus one, minus one counters. Once again, thanks to the Soulscar Mages, in this case of Gonzalo. And he's going to get aggressive. Everything in the red zone that can attack. A chump block so far from Marcio. Yeah, he can chump the uh, Chain Roller and then use his Chain Roller to eat a Soulscar Mage. And then potentially that, that'll leave him uh, taking some damage. Or he can just d do the slightly more aggressive line and just take four points of damage falling to two, but he doesn't lose Karizev that way, it, or basically his, his two major options. Yeah, it looks like he's lined up the Chain Whirler on the Scrounger there. <coughs> That's going to kill it. Takes a good hit of damage, though, down to four. And he's going to need to find something special off the top. He does not do so. And Gonzalo Pinto defeats his best friend in game number one. But of course, we're playing a best three out of five here in the semifinals. So, got a long way to go before we're going to be filling in those seats in the finals for this mirror match for our two Portuguese players. Take a look at our future match area. We'll be back with game number two right after these messages. Show off your love of Magic the Gathering with premium statues from Prime One Studios. Each figure stands 28 inches tall and is carefully sculpted in high quality resin. Pre-order yours today at SideshowCollectibles.com.
to the feature match area here in Richmond, Virginia. We're here for Pro Tour Dominaria. Mark Cyclif in the booth with Luis Scott Vargas. Down on the floor, we have our own Tim Willoughby. He's going to give us a little, uh, little update. He's down there in the action. Tim, what do you got for us? Well, I mean, obviously you saw the entire game, so there's not too much in terms of the cards played. But one thing that's worth noting that may be hard to pick up on is just that the vibe around here, it's very much like these are two friends playing the magic they've been playing their whole lives. Like, yes, they're in the semifinals of the Pro Tour, but they're having the best time of it. They took a little selfie together before the match started, <laughs> and Marcio said, well, you know what? If I have to lose someone in this top eight, I hope it's my friend. Oh, that's great, Tim. Thank you for that. Tim, of course, our flow reporter. And we're getting ready to rumble here in game number two. Now, worth reminding the audience, no sideboards yet. Yeah, this is effectively a, a game one, though it doesn't change all that much. This isn't like one of the control matchups, you know, where you get to board in cards like Duress and really change your deck's game plan. But well, this is still with the uh, original 60, so no changes yet. All right, taking a look at the opening hands here, this one... For Gonzalo, he has Mulligan to six, but he's kept to put a card on the bottom. And here's Bomac Courier to kick things off now for Marcio Carvalho. He is in the red zone and getting things rolling. Bomac Courier is a pretty big liability in, in this matchup. Just gets eaten by Chain Whirler so often. <coughs> Even in games where they don't draw Chain Whirler, it's unlikely to really draw you too many cards because if it gets out of hand, they'll, they'll all frequently have something like Shock or Braid to take it down if they need to. And... Overall, you, you kind of hope not to draw them and then to side them out. Yeah, uh, Marcio did side them out in his uh, quarterfinal match. He was playing against another Chain Whirler deck, and those were the first cards out. We'll talk about the sideboard plans when we get into the next game. Pair of one drops, though, for Carvalho. He's got the Soul Scar Mage to join. And Gonzalo here, really deciding between playing Kerry Zev or using an abrade, you know, how does he want to impact the board? He, he also has the option of both Scrap Heap Scrounger and Heart of Kieran, but neither of those by themselves are defensive plays at all. So not surprising that he would choose to put something on the board that Marcio at the very least has to remove if he wants to make forward progress. So Marcio could also weaken it with a Goblin Chain Whirler. Once Kerry gets knocked down to a 0-2, both of uh, Marcio's creatures can then attack un unimpeded. And the advantage of that as well is it lets Marcio get a threat onto the board, whereas if he casts this cut to ribbons, he's not advancing the board quite as much. All right, it looks like he's going to decide just to use that cut. That's going to kill Kerry Zev. And keep the damage flowing. Three more damage is going to knock Gonzalo down. 16. Three cards left in hand for Marcio Carvalho. This is a big turn for Pinto. He has taken a little bit of damage and has yet to establish a board presence. He is, of course, on a mulligan here as well. And this turn's not going to be great for Pinto either. He, he would really love to have just been able to play a chain roller and exploit that Beaumont career, but instead his, his best play is going to be something that costs two and probably just an, a, a, a braid or a heart of Kieran here. And an uncrewed Heart of Kieran is just really not going to help him very much. Not what, not what Pinto was looking for. And we know that once you get up to four mana with this red-black deck, real bad things start to happen. Yeah, and Marcio did just draw his fourth land, which now is going to let him play a Rekindling Phoenix here. Yeah. So Marcio is now significantly far ahead just because Pinto's turns have been a lot worse than Marcio's and Marcio was on the play. Unlicensed disintegration was the draw step there for Pinto, but man, it's so difficult. He can take out one of these small threats, but then he's just taking a lot of damage. And if he tries to go for the rekindling Phoenix, well, we know how that ends up. Well, Pinto can play a Scrap Heap Scrounger, which enables a Heart of Kieran to get crewed and then leave up a Braid. So he's got a line to kill the Phoenix if he really wants to. He can 
plate, scrounger, pass, and then on sometime on Marcio's turn, abrade the phoenix, turn it into the elemental, and then unlicensed disintegration the elemental. But this bone marker is actually heating up, despite that not being the, the card you're looking to draw. You know, when it goes un unchecked, it actually does quite a bit. Marcio also has the very uh, mana efficient play this turn option if he wants of Chandra, add two mana with the plus one, play Heart of Kirin. We have seen players using the uh, mana ability from Chandra often to help get a bit of a tempo boost. And that's exactly what he does here. So now he has Heart of Kirin, Rekindling Phoenix, Chandra, and two one drops on the battlefield facing down a single blocker for Gonzalo. Wow. Yeah, and Gasalo is priced into casting this braid. He can, he can take out the Heart of Kieran if he wants. He can start the process of taking down the Phoenix. But either way, he's not really going to get to make a whole lot of progress here. Marcio's, Marcio played two very good threats this turn while he was already ahead on board. There's the braid. He's going to use it to kill Heart of Kieran right now. Untap. Draw step. Another land off the top, Luis. This one has really slipped away from Gonzalo Pinto. He won the first game pretty convincingly, but he has never been ahead at any point in this game as Carvalho has just curved out and had a really nice draw. You see him looking at his friend, Gonzalo. Land. Boy, that Bomac career with four cards under it, too. Yeah, e even with Chandra and Phoenix aside, that Bomac career is actually threatening to, to refill Marcio's hand here. Like, Marcio can play a land, play a Chain Whirler, and then, you know, this, this enables him to make an attack. He can also plus one to flip Chandra's top card, use Chandra to flip the top card to see if there's anything cool lurking there. And there it is, the Goblin Chain Whirler. Ooh, I spoke a little too soon. Marcio got me. Solid pump fake from Marcio Carvalho, but it does look like that is going to be the line, right? Play it out, perhaps cash in the Bowmat career at some point, though the truth is he's so far ahead right now, he may only need the board that he has to win this game. And we're again running into the situation we ran into before, which was Chain Roller plus Soul Scar Mage means that Gonzalo has to either crew Heart of Kieran and let it get a minus one, minus one counter, or just be content not crewing it. Though Ugh. I don't think he can take the latter route because he has no other creature that can block. Let's take a little zoom in here at the board state for Marcio Carvalho. You can see that is formidable. Probably going to lead to the victory here in game number two. I believe the priority is on Gonzalo. He also has the option of casting Unlicensed Disintegration on the Soul Scar Mage, which is not really where you want to point that. Right. But that will stop the, the, the counters from being distributed in that way. Gonzalo going over his options, but predictably not liking any of them. It looks like he is going to crew the Heart of Kieran in response. As you mentioned, Luis, doing so turns it into a creature and means that minus one minus one counters on now both rather than one of his creatures but at least he has a blocker available speaking of a blocker avail available chandra just shot that down right out of the sky so shields fully down now and gonzalo decided gonzalo. whether he wants to disintegrate that bow marker but he he has decided against it he has done nothing with the unlicensed disintegration, but I think it's because every option he's looked at has led him to believe that I will still lose. <laughs> Even if I use it here, if I use it here, if I use it here, it's just all bad news for Pinto. And Marcio has five extra cards in reserve. He's got a Beaumont career that is ready to just completely restock him. So here's unlicensed disintegration now on end step to take down the Chain Whirler. And can no longer take down Chandra either, which is a, a you know an interaction that's come many times over the course of the turn. Yeah, why don't you talk about that real quickly for people so that aren't aware? It used to be that you could then redirect the three damage from unlicensed disintegration to the planeswalker that your opponent controls, but because of the new planeswalker redirection rule, you can target planeswalkers with cards that let you target you know any target. But since disintegration doesn't target, it no longer interacts with planeswalkers at all. 
Though Chandra can get taken down by the scrap heap scrounger now. Marcio might dig for a uh, shock here with his Beaumont Courier. Chain Whirler forces the issue here for Carvalho. He does now force to sacrifice his Beaumont Courier, but he's not going to be sad to do so because he was empty handed and now has five cards. And he says, I got it. A removal spell for your Goblin Chain Whirler is enough for lethal and an easy game there. For Marcio Carvalho, you can see that smile on his face. He still had that cut to ribbons lurking in the graveyard as Goodness well. So sakes. That game was not particularly close. All right, well, why don't we take a look at the sideboards here in our mirror match. We can look at uh, Marcio's options. You can see he has the ability to go a little bigger here, Luis. And this is something you'll commonly see among these red decks is uh, an extra land in the sideboard and some larger drops like Glorybringer, Ongroth, Siege Gang Commander. Chandra's defeat is, is key in taking out Chandra and Glorybringer. Plus, you know, you can snipe a Karizev if you need to. Uh, Aethersphere Harvester, a Braid Cut. In fact, everything but the Duress looks like it could be plausible. Siege Gang is a little vulnerable to Goblin Chain Whirler, so I, I'm i not sure if that is something that Marcy is interested in. Doomfall can exile uh, a Phoenix if, if need be, if you can kill all the other creatures. And Marcio's got a lot of cards he would want to take out as well. He, you know, th those Beaumont Couriers are, are first on the list, but you know, some number of potentially like Soul Scar Mages, uh, Shock when people are you know going sm going big instead of small. So Marcio is well prepared, and I, I imagine we'll see the same is true of Gonzalo. If he was listening to Marcio when they were testing, well, <laughs> yep, and this is the exact same sideboard. So we're we're gonna see. I would imagine the players board somewhat similarly. I mean, it could also depend play draw. Like you might want Doomfall more, for example, uh, on the play if you think you're you're worried about getting too far behind with it. But really, a lot of these cards just look good player draw. Like Chandra's defeat is just great either way. When you look at these, uh, is there any wiggle room for the players to level each other, as we call it, where? Maybe one of them goes one way, takes out some cards, but the other player does something unexpected by leaving cards in or bringing in cards that they wouldn't expect. Is there is there anything like that here? I don't really think so because so one of the ways you would want to do that is, you know, they would board out all their small creature defense and you you would keep in your Beaumont curves right. You you would level them by going low. The problem is Goblin Chain Whirler, Chain Whirler is not leaving your deck, and that card is the card that is amazing against the small creatures. So. There, there's really not much of an edge to be gained. You know, you, you can do exactly what you described if, say, you, you board in creatures out of your control deck and your opponent boards out all the removal. Mm -hmm. But in, in this matchup, the removal's good. And the removal punishes small creatures, so leaving the cre small creatures in just doesn't really make that much sense. Okay. And both players are looking to go big, so you're not really leveling them when you're doing that. 75-card mirror and a pretty straightforward situation for the players. They're going to be maybe making considerations for play versus draw, but beyond that, business as usual for these two. Also, take a look at the uh, the nice shirt and tie combo there for Gonzalo. He uh, he had some success at the uh, GP in Birmingham, and his wife said, that photo didn't look right. You're going to have to bring some nicer clothes in case you do well. And uh, Gonzalo, you know, he actually That's was weird because I, I bring nicer clothes in case I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it sure came in handy. And he's looking good. His wife's going to be happy with that. Uh, interestingly as well, uh, he's actually had a really rough run at the Pro Tour level. He made day two of his first Pro Tour, and then he went like 10 PTs in a row without it. Thought he was maybe cursed or something like that. Well, I think and, he, uh, he's uh, shaking that off for, for the time being. I, I've heard you and your testing teammates often talk about distribution of <laughs> <laughs> wins here. And looks like Gonzalo uh, did it right, because you'd rather have 10 PTs where you don't day two in one top eight if you're sitting in his seat. Yeah, you can. There's a way to distribute your wins where you'd rather go 0 5 a bunch of times and then top eight than to just to go, you know, 10, 6, 9, 7 in every pro tour. Yeah. I would rather just top eight every pro tour, though. That, yes. that I found to be a lot more fun. Well, you have had stretches of your career where it felt like that was the case. <laughs> it wasn't even that long ago. <laughs> Players getting shuffled up and ready for game number three. A little later, 
After this uh, best three out of five is finished up, we will have semifinal number two. That is Owen Turtenwald versus Wyatt Darby. Mono, gre mono red versus red black. This is, uh, this is one of those pro tours where the more aggressive decks have really risen to the top, pushing out all other archetypes except for one. And that one, well, that got pushed out in the quarterfinals as well. So we're on all aggro decks now from here on out. So this is uh, the PT where you probably don't want to run to the store and then try to catch up when you get back because these can go very quickly. No, but the, these decks, despite you know g going big and being a little slower post board, they're still they're still a deck that can play a Heart of Kieran into a Goblin Chain Whirler and just kill your opponent Smash on turn it. five. Yep. Goblin Chain Whirler. It must be said the card of the tournament. Oh yes. All right, we're underway here in game number three. We are playing now a more traditional best two out of three. Yeah, with, the, with the players at 1-1, one, one, they are just playing a best two out of three match, though sideboarded, uh, in order to determine who will move on here. Soulscar Mage still in the deck here for Gonzalo. He's going to get in there for one and leave two mana up before passing the turn back to Carvalho. Yeah, and Gonzalo would really love to, to see a third land here. Well, he does have at least the abrade for the Heart of Kieran on turn two from Carvalho. And there it is, land number three, right into Aethersphere Harvester. Which does pump the Soulscar Mage. That's right. So two more damage down to 15, and nice little board state brewing here for Gonzalo. He passes the turn back to Marcio, and Marcio needs to keep up, and he doesn't. He misses his land drop and passes yeah. the turn back, Luis. And, and there were some signals of that. Because uh, Marcio played Aspire of Industry as a second land, and with Goblin Chain Roller in your deck, you would just not ever do that unless that was the only land you had. Gonzalo getting a little frisky here. He plays Pia Nalar, uses the Thopter to crew up the Aether Sphere Harvester, tries to attack with Pia, but of course she doesn't have haste on her own. The good news for Marcio, he does have an Abraid to kill the Harvester, but he's got to find a land and he's got to find it soon, and he doesn't once again. Yeah, and one of the things that is unfortunate for Marcio as well is that even if he finds a land, that Spire of Industry currently does not tap for red mana, so he's not going to be able to play a Chain Roller to kick things off. Four damage crashing into the red zone now. And Marcio has to decide if he wants to use this Abraid. Killing PNLR is just really not that you know, exciting, but Marcio, it's going to be hard for him to, to, to pass the turn without spending his mana. He's just going to have to cast this Abraid. His hand is all spells. So he's got some expensive ones in hand, a pair of Phoenixes, as well as Siege Gang Commander. And he does have a Chain Whirler, which, as you mentioned, even a mountain wouldn't let him cast. Well, he didn't find a mountain, but he did find a land. Yeah, Dragon Skull Summit is just a strictly better mountain in this, in this spot. And it does help. Marcio can play his Pia. And then because he, he does have a Chandra's Defeat in his hand, that is the exact kind of card he needs, because he's going to maybe have an opportunity to double spell at some point here. But it's really going to be on Gonzalo whether he can follow up here and potentially draw his fourth land because he has some powerful fours in hand. He did not draw a land. I think he drew a Doomfall, perhaps? Yeah, Doomfall one of the worst draws in his deck right now because he can't cast it and needs Black to cast it, and it wouldn't even be that impressive right now. Yeah, he doesn't look super stoked on that Doomfall. Gonzalo can still attack with everything. The, he has an Abrade to cast, so if... Pia blocks Soulscar Mage. Uh, you can abrade the Thopter token. It's a 2-3. Could also just abrade, just kick things off, and then attack with everything. Yeah, it looks like he's going to take the most aggressive route. Just kill Pia Nalar and send it in. Marcio is going to trade Thopter for Thopter, but still, that's five damage. Marcio, his life total plummeting, still needs to find lands, and he does. There's a mountain off the top for Carvalho. All right, so now we're getting into it, because Marcio still can't cast two spells, because he can't cast... Chain Ruler plus Chandra's Defeat in the same turn, but he can play a Phoenix, and if Gonzalo doesn't have another removal spell, then that Phoenix is going to do a good job holding the fort. He finds a fourth land, so he kind of has a removal spell. He has Chandra, Torch of Defiance, or his own copy of Rekindling Phoenix that he can go for. Yes, yeah, so this is this is kind of interesting. Here, here's where Doomfall would have been amazing had he had he been able to. Oh it. wow. Gonzalo can just attack with Chain Whirler, and if Marcio takes it sensing the Chandra, then 
uh, Gonzalo then could potentially uh, just have to plus Chandra, but Marcio does does block, so the Chandra minus to kill the elemental token will will put Gonzalo back, you know, ahead on board. But here's where Marcio's Chain Whirler actually can do a pretty good job of, of cleaning things up. Marcio missed on land this turn. This was a turn where it would be really nice for him to draw land. Still pretty hard to resist just Chain Whirling down that Chandra, though. That's exactly what he's going to do. Gonzalo's going to drop down to 19, but more importantly, Chandra Torch of Defiance is going to hit the bin. Well, Gonzalo has a, a lot of good outs here. If he draws a Black Source that's untapped, which he doesn't have a ton of, he can Doomfall here, and that's very good for him. Uh, if he draws a Burn Spell to kill the Chain Whirler, he's in very good shape. And even if he misses, which he did, he drew, drew a Basic Mountain, he can still play a Rekindling Phoenix and start getting back into the driver's seat here. Pinto decided once again to trade off Chain Whirlers. Yeah, with Doomfall in hand, you, you are incentivized to trade off, and with this also potentially frees up the Soul Scar Mage to attack, so... Makes sense. Gonzalo really in the market for anything but Ooh, Basic Mountain. How about a Swamp? Or a Dragon Skull Summit? It was PNLR at the draw step there for Pinto. PNLR is actually pretty interesting, too, because Pia can immediately use her uh, Sacrifice ability to make it so the Phoenix can't block, and then hit Marcio for 5 down to 3. I think that's a, that's a pretty good aggressive play. Uh, otherwise, you're you're kind of priced into just passing the turn, or maybe attacking with both and getting a point of damage through a Soul Scar Mage. This is a close game, but Marcio has all spells in hand, so he's very close to regaining control here. It's going to be PNLR. Is he going to activate? Yes, he is. He's going to throw that Thopter right at the Rekindling Phoenix, okay. clearing the way for five damage. Carvalho's down to three. Hanging on by a thread, and he finds... A, scrap peeps another scrap peeps Scrounger. Yeah, these are not doing a whole lot for him. Not what he wanted to see there with Siege Gang Commander in hand. He's going to play Carry Zev Skyship Raider. Well, there's the Dragon Skull Summit, and that lets him cast Doomfall, which... Presumably, Marcia then sacrifices, carries Ev. Gonzalo attacks with everything, and then Marcia uses Chandra's defeat, killing one of Marcia's or one of Gonzalo's creatures. Phoenix blocks the other creature, and we end up in a spot where Marcia's at one, but has the opportunity to potentially stabilize here. Ooh, this is going to be very, very close. Chandra's defeat is going to keep Marcia Carvalho alive. The good thing for Gonzalo, though, is that one of the creatures that he's losing here is the, the Phoenix, the Rekindling Phoenix, and which means he's not losing it forever unless Marcio draws another removal spell. Because then Chandra's defeat, potentially taking down either. L looks like it's going to be PNLR, which she has a little bit more utility in the late game. Both hitting for two, so either way, Marcio is going to be down to just one. But he does get to untap, has the Rekindling Phoenix back again. And interestingly, he finds an Abrade here that he can use to kill the Elemental. Yeah, that was a very good draw for him. Though Gonzalo's got any removal spell as a victory. Sean has a victory. Because he finds some way to get that well, Phoenix out of the way. Doesn't quite do it because he gets to chump with the egg, but it does kill the Phoenix for good. Yes. Let's see if he's found something. This is a huge draw step for Gon Gonzalo Pinto. And I think you do Chandra's defeat. Yep, that's exactly what he drew, Luis, and that is going to cleanly deal with the Phoenix as Marcio Carvalho forced to chump lock with that token. And these are huge draw steps now. Three damage coming in. He needs a blocker, and he has one. Kerry Zev, he also plays out the scrounger, but once again, we're in a p situation where he can just win the game with the removal spell, and there it is. Cut off the top of the library, wins it multiple ways. And that is going to be game number two. Ooh, that was a close one. Wow, that was a real nail-biter down the stretch. Gonzalo looked to be in very good position early with Marcio Carvalho missing land drops, but uh, he just sputters over the finish line, and Marcio has to stare down at that Siege Gang commander in his hand for the entire game. He never actually hit land number five. No, interestingly enough, uh, 
G Gonzalo did not sign in his own Siege Gang Commanders. Oh, a little bit of a break from the norm between these two. I'll see if he changes that. Luis, let's take a look. And I mentioned it a few minutes ago, the card of the tournament, Goblin Chain Whirler. So many of these in the top eight, and uh, currently in the top four, everybody's playing them. Why is this card so good in the format? It goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where Chain Whirler sits on small creatures really, really effectively. You know, it punishes Beaumont Courier, Land of War Elves, uh, and, and any other creature with uh, one toughness, as well as, you know, getting a little chip damage in against planeswalkers and players that extra point of damage you know does add up but it does so while also not really losing too much ground against big creatures it's a 3-3 three, three first striker and that's a really good threat cruise heart of kieran combines really well with something like shock lightning strike or a braid to take down like a 5-5 five, five. and the the fact that it's good at basically every stage in the game the fact that soul scar mage and goblin chain whirler really combine effectively because it lets you uh, put a minus one, minus one counter on their whole team. It means that there's really no weaknesses for Chain Ruler, and the biggest cost, uh, you know, the mana cost of triple red, is something these red decks can bear because the red decks were already pretty good. Yeah, and interestingly as well, we see them in red-black decks like the mirror that we have here. It's not just mono red that plays Goblin Chain Whirler. And boy, I'll tell you what, if you're a standard player and you're looking to build a deck... This is the card that you need to keep in mind. If your deck is soft to a Chain Whirler, I would look another direction because these things are going to be everywhere. Now, a card that we've seen for a little while out of these red strategies, especially the bigger ones, is Rekindling Phoenix as well. And boy, this thing has proven its value. Just extremely difficult to kill, effectively needing two removal spells to get rid of it. And you've seen it actually push, in many ways, the removal that people pick towards exile effects. Yeah, Vraska's Contempt is a, is a really good answer to Phoenix. We actually saw Takimura play a main deck Vraska's Contempt in his mono red deck, and, you know, partially as a nod to Phoenix. It's competitive with Hazret. You know, other teams, for example, Owen Turtonwald's build has Hazret in the main deck and Phoenix in the sideboard, whereas Marcio just doesn't have Hazret anywhere and is just playing the full four copies of Rekindling Phoenix instead. Like Hazret, it's resilient to removal, takes, you know, a combination of multiples or an exile effect, and it has flying. So... There are some decks that are looking to, you know, be defensive on the ground, and Phoenix just makes a mockery of that and just flies right on over. Yeah, that's the thing that's impressed me most about the Phoenix is its ability to switch roles from being a powerful attacker in the air to saying, go, and people just staring at it like, I'm not going to attack into that Phoenix and just let you get value. I mean, you get the thing right back again. Yeah, it's a strong defensive option, too. It, play, yeah. it plays better defensively than something like Hazred does. Exactly. Players are presenting decks here for the fourth game of our first semifinal match. Gonzalo Pinto is up two games to one over Marcio Carvalho at the moment. I mentioned it at the onset, they're both from Portugal and in fact flew over here together, played in round one of the tournament and have known each other for over 15 years. I asked Marcio before the match, I said, is he your best friend? And he said, yeah, he is. Good discipline mulligan from Marcio there, by the way. He had a Mountain Mountain Karizev, but then double Glorybringer Doomfall. So uh, a hand that I think a lot of players would have kept and probably not done very well with because it's uh, two five drops and two lands, not a, not a good combination. I mean, why not? It's two of each. Seems fine. Run it. Pinto's kept his opener. Both players siding in their swamp. <laughs> Pinto told me, he, he said, I am nervous. I asked him before his quarterfinal and before this one, and he said, I'm nervous. I am. Nothing wrong with that. It's good I to be nervous. Yeah. I told him, I said, hey, once you get battling, you won't feel that anymore. He said, really? I said, well, I hope not. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been in the top eight. Marcia looking down the barrel of uh, a Siege Gang commander in one land here. But he does have Soul Scar Mage and Carry Zev, so I think he's going to keep it. And presumably scryed a land to the top. And Soul Scar Mage kicks things off for Marcio Carvalho. He is on the play for this game, as you can see. Chips in for just the one damage. And there's Kerry Zev, Skyship Raider, as follow-up. So one-two punch here from Marcio. Four pass and a turn back to Gonzalo, who does need to get things rolling now. He's got Ether Hub. Perhaps a removal spell. 
Yeah, that's exactly what he has. He has cut sorcery speed removal, but it gets the job done against Kerry Zev, leaving Marcio with just the one powered creature left over. And so this is this is an interesting spot. Gonzalo okay. really needs a third land. So if he doesn't draw a third land, then that's going to be pretty unfortunate for him. Oh <laughs> my goodness! He drew everyone's favorite uh, siege gang commander. Yes. On the other hand, Marcio's hand is not good. It is two unlicensed disintegrations with no artifact in play, and a siege gang commander. Which, okay, now he's getting close to casting. So this this game I think is firmly in Marcio's favor because he's one land away from uh, being able to cast siege gang commander. And if he if he can cast siege gang, he's going to be in really good shape. Okay, there was a land off the top now, Luis. I wouldn't be surprised if the play for Gonzalo was Doomfall, your hand. Oh, interesting. Because Marcio only has two cards. He played nothing on turn three and four except a Disintegration on a Scrap Heap Scranger. The odds that he has, like, a Glorybringer or a Siege Gang in his hand have to be pretty high. He chooses to do nothing. He just passes the turn back. But it seems that Marcio may have missed this fifth land drop, and that's going to open the door for Pinto to use a braid and perhaps find an opening here. And Marcio drew a Glorybringer, so now if Marcio draws a fifth land, then <laughs> he drew another Siege Gang. At this point, Doomfalling wouldn't even help. Marcio has all five drops in hand, and Gonzalo's best chance of victory is just winning the game before Marcio draws his, his fifth land. Marcio's advantage is getting, is getting lower as he continues to draw five drops and Gonzalo continues to draw lands. Is Gonzalo somehow going to be the first one to land a Siege King commander in this game? It's looking like it's possible. Uh, unlicensed disintegration to kill it. Land? No. Another missed land drop for Carvalho, and all he can do is muster a Scrap Heap's Crounger for his turn. No land for Pinto either, though. And Stranger essentially unkillable, given that Marcio has black mana and multiple creatures in his graveyard. So, Gonzalo could use this opportunity to doomfall away the, the Scrap Heap Stranger as well. That is certainly an option. There it is, doomfall. Target your hand, and, and unfortunately oh. for Gonzalo, he sees a lot of action. I, I'm inclined to just want to take the Glorybringer here because the first Siege Gang Commander you can trump with your own Chain, chain Whirler. And then the second is chain problematic, whirl. but <laughs> you can hope to draw another Chain Whirler, whereas the Glorybringer it will pr provide you with uh, instant uh, problems instantly. Gonzalo's not going to be able to follow up next turn with another Doomfall unless he draws a different black source because his Ether Hub is now dry. Wow, that is quite a hand there for Carvalho. <laughs> Marcio's like pointing at the glory prayer. <laughs> this is where in testing he may be able to pause and say, well, what matters here? <laughs> yeah, he's people. probably not going to do Gonzalo. He's on his own. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to take one of the Siege Gang Commanders, and he's going to hold his breath on this draw step that is not a land for Marcio Carvalho. Because if it is, it's going to be a parade of five drops. <coughs> Siege Gang into Glorybringer or the other way around. Let's find out. <laughs> it's a big Love sweat. It. Come on, Marcio. Don't do us like this. Soul Scar Mage? Couldn't see I it. I think it was a Phoenix. A Phoenix, OK. We'll, we'll, we will find out momentarily since it is castable. It was rekindling Phoenix for Marcio. Not bad if it's not going to be a land. Probably his best draw. And there's land off the top now for Pinto. So he gets to play Siege Gang Commander if he'd like. And I I'm interested. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think that uh, had he taken the Glorybringer with the Doomfall, he would be in much better shape right now. Uh, Phoenix would be causing him problems regardless. Another miss land drop for Marcio. This time he finds Heart of Kirin, though that's not going to stop him from attacking. He just jams. Can't block with the Scrounger and don't want to block with the Phoenix. So right. Pinto now has the ability next turn to abrade the Phoenix, play a Chain Whirler, and crash in for a bunch of damage. But 
I think that uh, I think that Marcio is pretty unhappy here. He just not hitting the fifth land for so many turns. It's, this is one of those games that if Marcio loses, which I actually don't think is anywhere near a foregone conclusion, Marcio is going to look back afterwards and just be like, "Wow, how did that happen? Like, yeah. like you know, how could I miss for four turns in a row or or whatever it ends up being?" Big decision here for Gonzalo on whether he wants to try to get rid of this scrap heap scrounger at the significant cost of multiple goblin tokens. No, he's going to minimize his losses here and just chump lock, preferring to keep one of them alive. Heart of Kieran, follow up for Marcio Carvalho, passes the turn back to Gonzalo. Is there another chain roller? All right. Got two goblin chain whirlers in his hand now. Boy, he really would have liked to take that glory bring yeah, now, wouldn't he? Because now, had he taken the the had he taken the glory bringer, Pinto would be in a spot where he could just kill the phoenix chain roller down, attack for a bunch, and know he wasn't going to die next turn. Now he, I believe, is dead to a untapped fifth land because Marcia will present three four power attacking creatures in the air. Pinto looks like he's trying to make a race out of this, but he is starting at a significant life deficit. Tax for five. Well, he's uh, he's going to go for a braid chain whirler. Yeah, and giving up on a, a little on the prowess trigger here. Yeah, that one damage might come back to bite him. And that gets a, the scrap piece scrounger gets countered. So actually, Pinto's not dead to to an untapped fifth land because the scrounger can no longer crew Heart of Kieran. If Marcio doesn't draw a, a land here, then I, I think Gonzalo is going to win very quickly. Oh, he Another didn't. Scrounger. He missed again. It's a scrap heap scrounger. Marcio Carvalho has missed for multiple turns and needing a land. He had three five drops in his hand at one point. And now Marcio can play a scrounger, crew on defense, block the chain whirler. He takes five, gets shot twice with the goblins, and that uh, is that, that nine? Him one short. Oh no! Is that the one damage that Pinto missed last turn? Could it be the difference here? He did have a prowess trigger available to him with the abrade that he was going to cast. He chose to attack first and cast a braid post combat, meaning that the skull scar mage only hit for one rather than two. And sometimes it's that close in these damage races. This is actually an interesting play. Marcio's hitting for two, and Gonzalo may not want to block with the chain roller because otherwise Marcio gets to reset his scrap heap scrounger. The cost of two mana. Because this way, if, if let's say Gonzalo doesn't block. Marcio then plays another Scrounger. Then Gonzalo leads with Chain Whirler. Marcio has to crew before the ability resolves. The, the heart becomes a 3-3, three, three, and then it chumps the Chain Whirler instead of eating it. Yeah, he's taking it. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good no box. Doesn't change the clock in the air with the heart either way. It's still two turns, and he's going to untap. Now, if he finds a land here, he could yeah. throw three goblins, and he... <laughs> It's a canyon slope. did, but it's a canyon slope. Still, I, I think leading with the Chain Whirler here works out pretty nicely because if Marcio doesn't block Chain Whirler, let's see, he takes three, six. No, that's not actually quite enough either. So let's see. So if Gonzalo leads with Chain Whirler, Marcio has to crew in response, but then he can put the 3-3 three, three in front of the Siege Gang Commander. First strike... Marcio goes down to seven. You throw Chain Roller, but you don't have enough mana to throw the Siege Gang. So Gonzalo's two points short if he taps out for Chain Roller, or taps three for Chain Roller. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if he just, just straight up attacks right now with everything, Marcio, if he blocks the Siege Gang Commander, he takes 10. He takes lethal. So he has to block Chain Roller. In that case, you can let First Strike happen and then throw a Goblin Token. So I think it's slightly better to attack with uh, with everything first. He's choosing not to do that, Luis. He's going to play oh. the Goblin Chain Wheeler pre-combat. Yeah, Marcio did not want to do this. Uh, he, I think it's too late now, but he just wanted to let that resolve and lose his Scrounger, because then he could buy back the Scrounger and crew the heart with that Scrounger. He didn't see it. 
and so now he's he he put an extra minus one minus one counter on his heart, which he he didn't need to do. Pinto attacks with everything except oh, the siege gain commander. Mercio's at nine now, thanks to that chain whirler trigger. I think Marcio can still win this though, because he's not he's not taking he can just take the damage. He just takes six, going down to three. And then if he draws a land, he just glory bringers and oh no, he's one short you know, he gets to bring in the scrounger in a turn. Yeah, if he draws a land, he can just glory bringer Heart of Kiron, Gonzalo down. Four, five, six, seven, that would be lethal. Canyon slew for Gonzalo. All right, untapped land. Untapped land now for Marcio Carvalho. Can he find one off the top of the library? Finally, it's a mountain. He's done it. <laughs> Took him long enough. Wait, does no. he have it? It doesn't work. The the Soul Scar Mage will prevent two of the damage. If if Gonzalo sees it and throws a, a goblin at at one of the attacking of features, course. it gets two minus one minus one counter. It is non combat damage. He has the mana to do it. He needs to just use it to shrink a creature so, to prevent lethal. Yeah, so Gonzalo should still win this, I believe. I think, well, he's only got two untapped creatures, so he throws one at the Glorybringer. He can, no, he, he, that he, is a goblin. Th this actually does work. It, it is lethal because he gets to, he, he gets to, uh, oh no, he has to crew that. No, <laughs> Gonzalo should be able to win this, I believe. He gets to block here, well, take that, that's, one. That scrounger's not attacking. That, that scrounger is crewing the heart. Oh, right, right. He, he meant to block the other one. Yeah. yeah, block that one, and that's five damage. And that's five damage. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Had Marcio not crewed heart in response to the chain roller, then he would have won that game. And that's oh. Gonzalo Pinto winning the match three games to one and advancing to the finals over his countryman and best friend in a very complicated wow, final was, two turn insane. stretch. Yes. There was a lot of ways those last two turns could have gone. Uh, I believe m more of the paths lead to Gonzalo winning than Marcio, but wow, the, the way it shook out, I think there's a lot of decisions both players could have made differently. That was a really, really intense and complicated game. That's right. That's the kind of one that you want to take a screenshot of and get it in front <laughs> of a few people to, uh, you know, go over and get the right answer. Wow, crazy stuff down the stretch in that mirror match between the two players from Portugal, but only one emerges and moves on to the finals. That was Gonzalo Pinto defeating Marcio Carvalho three games to one. Now we've got another semifinal match to bring you between Owen Turtenwald and uh, Wyatt Darby. We're going to be setting that up and then bringing you live action here from Richmond. Don't go anywhere. Looking for a challenge? Magic Online offers monthly limited and constructed events, which lead to the yearly Magic Online Championship. Download Magic Online at mtgo.com and start earning the points you need to enter.
Hello and welcome back to the news desk. Marie Bartholdi, Rich Hagen, Simon Gertz, and Paul Chian. Wow, that was a pretty cool game, Paul. Yeah, that came down to the wire. That was so, so close. Marshall Carvalho was down, was one damage short, and he could have actually gotten in that extra point of damage had he let a scrap heap scrounger died, gotten it back, then crewed the heart of Kieran, then it wouldn't have had that minus one, minus one counter from the Soul Scar Mage with the Chain Whirler. At the same time, Gonzalo Pinto missed a point of damage where he attacked with the Soul Scar Mage, cast in a braid post combat and uh, that had a prowess trigger. So I think if both players played optimally, I think Gonzalo still would have won, but still, what a crazy game. Yeah, really great. Well, let's hear from the player himself. BDM is on the floor with Gonzalo Pinto. Thanks, Maria. I'm here on the floor with Gonzalo Pinto, who's waiting for the winner of the match that's getting ready to be played behind us. Gonzalo, a little bittersweet uh, having to play against your friend there. Yeah, it was. But one of us had to win, so thank God it was me, I so guess. So a little bit more sweet than bitter here? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Now, uh, tell me about that last game. It was it was pretty harrowing. I, I know watching it, it, you know, it seemed like it could have gone either way. Yeah, it was stumble on four mana with three, five drops on hand. So I was pretty lucky that he didn't draw the, the fifth land for a while. And I managed to turn the game around, I guess. So that was it. Okay, now you, you've played on the Pro Tour, you have, a, you have a bunch of experience, but this is obviously your first day two since your very first Pro Tour, and you're waiting to play in the finals, and I imagine people at home have fantasized about this experience themselves. How are you feeling as you wait for this match to give you an opponent in the finals of Pro Tour Dominaria? It's unimaginable. I mean, when I watch the stream at home, I understand that they might feel nervous, they might misplay because they are nervous and everything. Now that I'm here, I, I'm still shaking from the last game and it finished already like five minutes ago so it's it's crazy well, well thank you so much for taking some time to share that with us good luck in the finals thank you. good games the rest of the way here at pro tour dominaria thanks so much bdm yeah that's really neat to hear that he's you know you see it on tv and you're like oh well they're sure they're nervous but you get in there and you're like yeah it's really nerve-wracking actually <laughs> i can actually feel it all right well let's take a look at our bracket to see where we were this morning and where we are headed yet this afternoon taking a look at our quarterfinals there we had kazuyuki takimura versus marcio carvalho marcio carvalho came out on top with his red black aggro ernest lim the lone blue player in our top eight on Esper Control was up against Gonzalo Pinto, who we just heard from on Red Black Agro. And of course, Gonzalo took that match. Then we had Thomas Hendricks versus Wyatt Darby. Wyatt Darby, mono red Agro, came out on top there, three games to one. Owen Turtenwald versus Manuel Lenz, the Magic Online Grinder, three games sweep there for Owen Turtenwald. And Gonzalo Pinto playing the mirror match of Best Friends versus Marcelo Carvalho. Garcelo Pinto came out on top there. So looking forward, we have Wyatt Darby versus Owen Turtenwald. Here we go, Wyatt Darby. Let's learn a little bit more about him. 23 years old, this is just his second pro tour. He went three, four, and one. At his first, he's an insurance agent from Iowa City. He won an RPTQ to come back and play here. That's, of course, a regional pro tour qualifier. Went 6-0 in booster draft at this pro tour, so a couple of pro tour trophies there. 6-3 and one in standard. His favorite memory, hitting a two-out lightning strike to win round 15, which is pretty cool. And let's take a look at his deck. It is by far the purest version of aggro that we have in our top eight here mono red aggro here paul nothing but mountains yeah i don't i don't even understand we even we even try to weaken this deck a little bit and uh <laughs> here we are it's still here uh i mean the deck is still incredibly powerful it got a great addition in the goblin chain whirler and you want to talk about consistent deck right how about 24 mountains right that's as consistent as it gets you never have to worry about missing a beat here all your lands come into play untapped and you know it's got a nice curve and this is the deck that can play legitimately four hazards and also be able to attack with it we've seen the red black decks shave on the number of hazard as they go further and further up the curve but the mono red deck this is looking to curve out its curve is much lower it's got the hazards and the phoenixes at the top end of the curve yeah i was talking with him he said he was testing with constructed master matt severa last night it's a good person to test with yes it is yeah. coming up to the pro tour playing a lot of against a lot of red in the leagues on magic online he said you know what i think i always want to have that hazard on turn four. Oh yeah all right, so let's hear from Corey Burkhart, who's a friend of Wyatt Darby. BDM is with him.
Gonzalo Pinto, Wyatt Darby, Owen Turtenwald. How big a deal is it that Owen, on the face of it, is just in a different league to the other two as a player in terms of experience? Yeah, I think the experience is very important. Gonzalo was just talking about how nerve-wracking it is. I mean, this is his first... P yes, is the second PT top eight now? Uh, first PT, first, P right, first, but, first yeah. PT top eight. But just the, you know, it's the first time for, for the other two, and Owen's been there before. Uh, he's never picked up that trophy, so I think there are still some nerves on Owen's side too. You know, we talk about how, yeah, he's been here before. This is all just, you know, he, he's used to it. But no, Owen's feeling it too because he really, really wants to win. Simon, were you like that when you won your Pro Tour? Because one of my abiding memories of that Pro Tour was you going, yeah, sure, Luis has 16-0 and uh, that's who I want to play. Because when, if I win, I want to say that I beat the best. And you felt relentlessly calm throughout. Were you nervously paddling under the water through that top eight? No, for some reason I wasn't, but there was a very particular uh, turn of events because I hadn't lost a match on Saturday. So I was just feeling very confident in the zone, so to speak. And uh, I think these, this event is, is very different from that. You, you don't have a constructed deck where you can just say, I'm significantly favored over, over some other. If you look at these lists, they're so similar. We are talking about tiny edges. We're talking about single points of damage being, being the deciding factor. And Owen, I absolutely agree, he is the, the favorite just because of his resume. Uh, whenever I see this number in front of his name, I think it's 14 this weekend, I, I think to myself, it has to be better than that. Owen is not the 14th best player in the world. He, for me personally, he is in the top five of all time. All right, well, Corey is ready for us now down on the floor, so let's hear from him. All right, so Simon, let's look at Owen Turtonwald. He is White Derby's opponent, and he is playing Red Black Aggro. And he, there you see him, 29 years old, over 300,000 pro points, uh, 300,000 lifetime earnings. What well, that'd be a lot of pro points. <laughs> 559 for him. Let's look at his deck. Here it comes, Red Black Aggro. We've seen it all before. We're going to see it all again. Is Owen going to make it to the final? If you ask me, yes. He, 
he blazed through Mono Red in the quarterfinals, and I expect him to do that again. He has been working his life to win these kind of matches. All right, let's see if he can do it. It's time for the second semi-final of Proto Dominaria.